Money problems? Yeah, we've all been there. It's easy to think, if I just made more money, I could solve more problems. But let me tell you something. God cares about our money, and He has a plan throughout the Scripture that shows us how to live in blessing and prosperity. I saw an analogy a few years ago, and I thought I would share it with you, um, and that is the fact that we all control 100% of our income. We, we have influence on where that money goes. And so right here, this represents 100%. It doesn't matter if you make $20,000 a year, $40,000 a year, or $400,000 a year, we choose where to place our money. So right here, these are 10%. This is a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent. These are 5, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95. Here's a 2, 97, and these are 1s, 98, 99, 100. So God cares about our 100. And the first thing he says is we should give. Yep, that's the first thing we do with our 100 is we give. And if you know the principle of tithing, the word tithe means 10th, and God says that we pay our tithe uh, to the temple. That's the local church. We pay our tithe and we do that first. And anything we pay above the tithe is offerings. And that could be 2%, 5%, 10%, 20%. You can give away 20, 30% of your income. The Lord says that he loves a cheerful giver. And I love the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, you'll always have enough and plenty to share. So let's just say for the sake of analogy that you start off by giving 2% extra. You're always going to have enough and you're going to have plenty to share. That's a promise from God. The next thing in life where our money goes is our taxes. And if you live in America, a lot of our taxes are taken before we even receive our income. In the United States of America, the average citizen pays 25 six, seven, eight percent of our income in federal, state, local uh, sales taxes. And so this is a, a lot of money. But you know what? God cares that you pay your taxes. When they questioned Jesus, he answered, pay to Caesar what is Caesar's and pay to God what is God's. Pay to the government what they're requiring, regardless of where you live, and pay to God what he requires. And so the next phase is our savings. God cares about saving. He says in Proverbs 21 that the wise have wealth and luxury, but the fools spend whatever they get. So what if you put 10% of your income away into savings. We call it paying yourself. Yeah, you deserve to get paid. You deserve to pay yourself from what you earn in your wages. Now you need savings, not just in that regard for investment sake, but you need savings for future items in life that come up like repairs and maintenance and purchasing things, uh, replacement items when they break. You know, the average American cannot replace all four tires without financing them. But the thing is, when we buy a car, we know it's going to need new tires one day. It's good, they're going to need maintenance and oil changes and brake changes. And so savings is important because you can use that money uh, later on. You know, the washer, the dryer, the refrigerator, those appliances either need to be replaced or repaired. And you can do that in your savings without going into debt. And you know what? You can also save for that vacation and really, really enjoy it. And the next part is the fun part. It's the spending part. We call it lifestyle. Each and every one of us determine our lifestyle. We determine what is important to us to spend on. And so we have 50% left over. 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50% left over. And this is a very healthy way to live. You're, you're paying to God in your giving. You are also paying your taxes. You're paying yourself. And then you're spending money on the things that you enjoy, the kind of car you want, the kind of jeans you want, the kind of house you want, the kind of appliances you want, the kind of entertainment that you want. This is the part the Bible says in Philippians 4 to be content with what you have. And so this is the challenge because oftentimes we want to keep up with the Joneses. We want to reach outside of what our ability is and have something that maybe we're not ready to have yet. I heard it said years ago that enough is a choice. Yeah, those are powerful words. Enough is a choice. When we're hungry, we eat and our body tells us when we've had enough or when we've had too much. 
The problem is our checkbook, our finances, our checking account doesn't actually tell us that. And so we can spend outside of our means with our lifestyle. So you have the choice of when we walk into the store, do we want to buy the $800 television or the $3,000 television? And that depends on your lifestyle and how much money you earn if you can live within your means. The problem is not this, 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 or this. The problem is a four letter word called debt. This is what gets us into trouble. You know, the average American spends 30% of their income servicing debt, paying interest, paying fees, continually serving debt, and we need to take that money from somewhere. So if you have debt, if you need to service 30% of the debt, you've got to take it from here because all we have is this 100%. Proverbs 20 says that the borrower is a slave. Yeah, those are powerful words. The borrower is a slave. So anytime you're in debt, you're a slave to whoever you owe money to. And because we think things make us happy, it's easy to get into debt because our lifestyle says, I want more. So to service debt, we've got to do something. So that means we take money from spending on ourselves to service the debt that we use to spend on ourselves. And so we can trim back a little. We don't eat out as much. We don't go to the movies as much. Our date nights aren't as expensive. We, we can trim back our lifestyle to service debt, but we still need to come up with more. And so we can say, wow, we can uh, start cutting the cable bill, start cutting, you know, some entertainment costs, start cutting other things, how much we're, uh, how, how often we're buying clothing and such. And so therefore we, we can take a little bit more out of our lifestyle, but now our lifestyle is kind of feeling the tension of it. Now, so where do we go? Okay. I can take uh, money out of my savings. I don't need to spend that much. So I still want to save. So I'll just take uh, savings and put it over here and I'll take this much and, and start saving, but still we don't have enough to service. Now here's what we know. We can't take from here. Why can't we take from here? Well, there's penalties, there's prison, there's, you can get in a whole lot of trouble taking from here. Even if you own your home, you know, you still have to pay taxes on that property. Try not paying taxes on your home and you'll find out who the real owner is when that sheriff department shows up to the house. So we know we can't do this. And so it's easy for us to take from our givings to service our debt. So we start by just taking a few percentage. I'll catch up with the missionary later. I'll catch up with that. I just need to service debt a little bit. And then the challenge is debt is crying out. Interest is accumulating and you're feeling it. The bill collector is calling. You need to service debt. And so we say, God, I'll catch up next month. I, I can't quite do everything, but I can do some, uh, but, but I'll catch up. I still, I still need to do this and then I'll get back over here. But the problem is then we take from here and we're still not servicing it and we're not paying ourselves and we're not paying God. And then we're doing this and we're playing this uh, game where we're trying to juggle. Our life is out of balance. There is no peace. We're stressed out all the time. We're always looking at the bills. We're always needing more. And it's because we're outside of the alignment that God has for our finances. He really does care and he really does have a plan for you and for me to walk in financial blessing. We just have to get things back into proper alignment. <music>